Hello guys, Lawa Sanusi here uh, and today's interview is actually inspired by the fact that we are students in the health sector, we've had to move from one rotation to the next, uh, from internal medicine to surgery to pediatrics to obstetrics and gynecology and I think the problem we have is deciding which of these uh, fields to specialize in and to make that decision I think we need enough information beforehand and today we've been privileged to meet one of our top obstetrician and gynecologists at Tamale Teaching Hospital and she's going to enlighten us on some of the things that we need to know and consider if we do decide to specialize in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, I think I'm just ready here with uh, everything for the interview. Uh, let's go. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you very much for our meeting us today and spending time just to tell us about what uh, obstetric and gynecology is and what we should expect when we decide to specialize in this uh, specialty. Uh, thank you once again. You are most uh, welcome. Before I do say anything, please can you just tell us about yourself? Yeah. I'm Hawa Maliki. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. I'm a senior lecturer with the University for Development Studies and uh, an obstetrician gynecologist in the Tamil Teaching Hospital. I'm a wife, I'm a mother of three, and I hail from Walwale in the Northeast region. Wow. I think that's just a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice, Doc. Thank you very much. Uh, our first question for today will be that can you give us a sense of what ONG is about? So as it, it, it states, obstetrics and gynecology is about women's health, okay, in totality. So women's health in and outside pregnancy. So the gynecology aspect of it is the woman's health outside pregnancy. Everything that has to do with the reproductive tract outside pregnancy is gynecology. And then everything that has to do with pregnancy is obstetrics so you have the two together to give you obstetrics and gynecology okay. uh, our second question will be that uh, as medical students we want to know what is the journey like from being a medical student to specializing in ONG okay so the background is for you to have your MD of, or your MBCHB after you pass if you are doing the Ghana pathway then you have to do your house job or your internship as other people will call it now house job is for a uh, four rotations so you do two years of six months rotations in four areas and <clears throat> mandatorily obstetrics and gynecology is one then after your house job if you are inclined after your experience in ONG, you want to be an obstetrician gynecologist, then the journey starts. So you start as a medical officer in one of the many hospitals we have in the country and you have to serve a minimum of one year. During the period, you would write an exam that is the entry exam to either the ones that are uh, available the training uh, curricula that are available in Ghana are two. We have the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons and we also have the West African College of Surgeons but you can still do it in Ghana. So you would either enroll in one or the two and then you would um, so you start with an entry examination when you pass the examination you attend a selection interview and then after that you would be enrolled in one of the colleges the schools and mo almost all our um, teaching hospitals provide this uh, uh, courses now so tth you can do ong as residency here konfanoche uh, kolebu cape coast ho and some selected regional hospitals so you can do your, your, you can start your journey there. Then you write a membership examination. In Ghana, the membership examination comes after three years of um, rotation. And then after the membership, you now do another three or four years, depending on the subspecialty that you want. So, and that would now make you a fellow. So you can do both Ghana College and West Africa, or you just do one. 
That's a very good one, Doc. Um, want to know, are there some opportunities within the field or the specialty? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> we would like to know some of them. A lot. I mean, if you are an obstetrician gynecologist, there are so many um, opportunities that come to you, both clinically and outside the clinic. So within the clinic setting, you have the access to take care of your patients so you have a good clientele i if you if in, in normal uh, doctor conversations people say that there's money in the pelvis you know it's like a gold mine yes it's true because people will not stop having babies reproductive tracts everybody has them so the con the conditions are many uh self specialties are coming up Things that we used not to be able to do in Ghana, we are now doing, for example, at, uh, assisted reproductive technology. It's now available. It, it fetches a lot of money if you want, if you are able to set up a service and then provide it. And there's always space to, to work. Okay. And uh, Doc, please, are there certain sub-specialties sub within the field to ONG? Yes. There are so many subspecialties. So you have what we call the general obstetrics and gynecology, which is also considered as a subspecialty. And then we have much more specialized um, niches. So the generalist does everything obstetrics, everything gynecology. Then you have subspecialties within the obstetrics and other others also within the gynecology. So for obstetrics, for instance, we have a, a maternal fetal medicine, which has to do with taking care of the baby in utero all the way to delivering all the medical conditions that come in pregnancy and how to handle it. You, we have reproductive endocrinology and infertility, and they deal with assisting women in getting pregnant when they need to get pregnant. Um, on the gynecology side, we have urogynecology, we have gyne oncology, um, we have family planning. There are so many subspecialties. Then yeah, we'll have to read more on it to exactly. explore a lot of exactly. them before we choose. Mm -hmm. And Doc, what are some of the things that you enjoy most about being an obstetrician or gynecologist? Smile on the face of my patient. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> when you are. Um, successful in I mean whatever need that the patient had and then they come to you and you're able to meet their need and they get well and they just smile that is just my highest point that's really great and fulfilling to yeah. hear and also is there any advice you would like to give to those planning to specialize in ONG yes so um, ONG is exciting it is um i mean the positives about it so many but then when we get one negative it's so de devastating i mean you do not want to lose a, a woman's baby now that you want to lose a pregnant woman these are women in their prime of ages with very young children you really don't want to lose that so i always encourage people to enter into obstetrics and gynecology with the passion not because you think you can make money because if not you are going to get frustrated with the workload there is so much work to do we have we work the almost the longest hours compared to our colleagues in other subspecial uh, other specialties and at all points in time you have to be alert if you if you look around wherever there is litigation it always has to do with the mother and child. It always, almost always, has to do with O and G. Okay. And also, uh, what is a work-life balance like as an obstetrician or gynecologist? <laughs> Very tough. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough. I mean, but you need to um, be able to plan your life, plan your day, set your borders, set your boundaries. The periods that you are working, you try to achieve most with the little time that you have. As I said, you are you spend long hours at work as an OBGYN, but you still have to make time for your family. So you have to plan 
and let's say you have a particular day or time that you said okay this is time for my children or this time for my my spouse and i'm going to do just that for instance the whole week i have been very busy i had to promise my my girls that we're going to have mommy mommy day tomorrow so tomorrow we're going to do a lot of fun activities together it's just going to be one day but they don't know when it will happen again so i have to just try to make it happen because it's it's really very 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 difficult and our last and final question will be there was the salary range for those that are in ong so it's it's the same unfortunately in ghana we do not pay people um according to how much output they do we pay people according to qualification so once you are a member or you've qualified as a specialist it doesn't matter whether you are an eye specialist you are a obstetrician gynecologist a surgeon or orthopedic your salary is same so elsewhere if you go to other countries people's the its salaries are staggered according to how much work load you have and your work output but in ghana it's not like that so it's just the same so thank you very much. Uh, this, this has been a very short se session, but then we really appreciate your time touching on the most important things that we need to hear. And we'd love to have you another time to share more information with us. You're thank you very much. You're most welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow, that was a fruitful and informative session we had with our consultant, Dr. Hawa Maliki. So I want to say thank you once again. And to my viewers, if you did enjoy this session, and you want me to do another one for another specialty then try commenting which specialty you want me to do and i'll try and do that and if you did find this session very nice and informative try commenting below and liking this video and also don't forget to subscribe uh, see you next time bye